Dave with Mile High Campers coming back at you again with another video and today I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about installing an RV slide decal. Now you're going to want to watch this entire video because I'm going to be going over two different ways on installing the decal. One is for beginners and the other one is my favorite way of installing. And then we're going to also be talking about decals a little bit in general. I've been selling a lot of these decals um, on my Etsy store so be sure to check out the link in the description below and you can check out all the different designs we have. Also if you're not seeing the design you like be sure to message me because in some cases I'll be able to custom make a design for you that we may reuse on our website. We're going to be installing this RV decal on the slide. Now you can actually install this decal anywhere. You can install it on an interior wall. You can install it on the door to your RV. There's many different places that you can install it so you can use your own creativity for that. You're obviously an RV owner so you understand that the decals on an RV fade as well. So they're not permanent um, and the more exposure to weather obviously the, the less time it's going to last. Most of you are using your RVs for recreation, so the chances of this decal lasting a long time are pretty good. If you're a full-time RVer, obviously it's going to get more exposure than a recreational use RV. The first installation method we'll be talking about is the dry mount method. This is my personal favorite way to install these types of graphics, and it's the way that I recommend. I think after watching both methods, you'll agree that this is definitely the faster, easier way to do it. The second method is going to be the wet mount. Some people prefer this because it's for beginners and a lot of people have asked me about it so that's why I'm gonna do that one as well. Be sure to watch to the end of the video because I will be giving some extra tips on how to help with longevity. Alright all of our decals get shipped in a box like this and they come rolled up like so. And don't panic if it doesn't want to lay flat. It's, there's gonna be a little bit of curb to it. This will take care of itself when we go to install and I'll show you that in just a minute. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is be sure to clean the area where you're gonna install the decal. Now this is on the exterior slide. Um, it's very dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and use denatured alcohol. You can also use isopropyl alcohol. You can use Windex. Do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I don't wanna tell you what to use on your RV. You decide what's best for you. Now. If you are going to use denatured alcohol, the best way to do it, you want to test a little piece and make sure it's not going to pull the paint off. And it doesn't look like it's going to cause our paint to come up. Now, i got to be honest with you, I've only actually seen that happen one time where denatured alcohol actually took off paint. Um, for the most part, it's pretty safe to use, but you always want to check a spot and make sure. So you want to do a really good job. You can also use soapy water if you want, if you're more comfortable with that. Once you have the area clean where you want to install the graphic, start by using two pieces of tape to hold the graphic in place. I like to use painter's tape because it will remove easily and normally will not leave any adhesive residue behind. When measuring to get the graphic straight, you do not want to measure to the bottom of the transfer tape and backing paper. This line is not straight. It is best to measure either a straight vertical or horizontal line in the graphic or measure to the bottom of a flat letter on each side of the graphic. For example, you would want to make sure you measure from the bottom of the A to the bottom of your surface area and you would then want to make sure that measurement is the same going from the bottom of the R to the bottom of your surface area. Now the image on the right does not have any flat bottom letters. They are all round bottom letters. As you can see, the C dips lower than the rest of the letters. So you would not want to take a measurement using the C. You would want to take a measurement using the bottom of the A to the bottom of your surface area. And you would want to make sure that that measurement is the same going from the bottom of the R to the bottom of your surface area. If you had a combination of flat bottom letters and round bottom letters in your design, you would either want to take the measurements from the flat bottom letters on each side or the round bottom letters. You would not want to align one side using the flat bottom letter and then a round bottom letter on the other side. The image would end up slightly crooked. One thing to note, you must make sure that the bottom edge of your surface area is straight. If it is not, you could take the measurements from the top like this. And if neither one is straight, then you may just have to eyeball the image on there the best that you can. Uh, obviously, I guess you can tell I'm a G.I. Joe fan. So I'm going to go ahead and center it left to right. And I'm measuring to my furthest point of vinyl. And it's two and a half there. And 
two and a half there. So I'm measuring from here to here and here to here. Okay, so we've got it centered good. And on this graphic, as you can tell, we have no letters to measure off of, but we do have are these straight lines here. So we're gonna pick a line, I'm probably gonna pick the longest one, and I'm gonna take a, a measurement from here and a measurement to there to get it centered up and down. I'm going off the bottom of the slide. So once again, if you get a design that doesn't have letters or something, uh, just find the straightest line that you can that goes all the way across the design. We're gonna go with 25 and three quarter there. 25 and three quarter there needs to go up just a little bit. Oh, that looks about right. Okay, I've got it taped up. Just taking a double check here. All right, so I like that. I think that's gonna work right there. Once again, I'm gonna take some tape and just go right down the center of it. I stayed just to the right of the vinyl there, so my only overlap is gonna be right here. All right, so this is my preferred method. And I think even a beginner, I believe even a beginner can do it this way with no problem. But again, do what you're comfortable with. So we're gonna be very similar to the wet mount. The only difference is we're not gonna be using any water. Again, gonna tear it there. Then we're gonna go middle out and I'm just making sure to keep this up off of the camera because if I lay this down, it will stick. I'm willing to bet that once we get this on, there will be no bubbles on this either. So if you do it right, you won't get any bubbles. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze this down a little harder. Because we are working with a textured surface. This will install much better on a smooth surface like fiberglass. But because this slide is textured, we wanna make sure we get it nice and squeegeed down. Okay, next we're gonna remove our tape. And same here, I'm just gonna grab this, take off the mask, making sure to leave it hinged, starting in the middle, up, middle, down. And slowly working my way toward the edge. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the transfer mask and it should peel right off. Now, like I was saying, because we're dealing with a textured surface, you're gonna wanna push down the vinyl as best you can. We're gonna take our heat gun and we're just gonna slowly go around it, especially the edges. and just get it worked down onto that. You do not want to touch the heat gun to the side of your camper. It can burn the paint as well as the vinyl. So I'm just hovering above maybe an inch and I'm just making sure I'm getting it all down. Now, the heat gun is just added extra for, because this is textured. If you install this on smooth fiberglass, metal, um, you would not need to use the heat gun. It would be ready to go right away. It's always best to let the decal sit in the sunlight for a while and kind of get baked on, if you will, before you were to move the slide in, say on this particular decal, or if you were gonna wash it. Um, once it's been adhered on there good enough, and it's been on there for a while, you can wa wash over it with um, soapy water's fine. You can even wax over it. The only thing Thing that may cause an issue for you is if you used a pressure washer against it. I would not recommend using a pressure washer. But uh, once you get it all good, we're gonna let this sit on here for a while, let the sun uh, kind of beat on it, and it should be good to go. Okay, so we're gonna take our first measurement down to the bottom of the slide, and it looks like we're 16 and a half, 16 and a half right to the bottom of that A. Now let's go ahead and see what we are looking like on this R here. And actually we're 16 and a half, uh, pretty close. We can come down just a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is just pick up that one little piece of tape 
on the right side, leaving the tape on the left and just slowly move it down. And that looks good there, 16 and a half. And we'll come double check it over here, 16 and a half, perfect. Use your tape to help you. If you need to lower one side or raise one side, just pick up the tape here and move it up or down. Pick up the tape here, move it up or down. We can also measure it side to side. And the best way to do that is to take our furthest point, say on this side and our fur furthest point on this side and just take a measurement to the furthest point and make sure that they're where you want them to be. And in this case, they're where I want them to be. So now we have it perfectly centered. The next step is to take a piece of tape, our painter's tape again, and run it right down the center. Try to avoid as much vinyl as you can. So we're coming right in between letters here. Um, some designs you'll be able to come straight down without even touching vinyl. In this case, because we have cursive lettering, we're, we're gonna hit vinyl no matter what. So. I'm going to go ahead and add a second piece here. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to be using a mild, very mild solution of soapy water and our vinyl squeegee. First thing we're going to want to do is remove this piece of tape. We'll just set it off to the side. And then we're going to peel the transfer mask with the vinyl off of the backing paper. And then you just put your finger up here, make a little tear, and you can just rip it on down. Okay. You can use your tape to hold it. Don't stick it on the vinyl. It's just on the transfer mask. Okay, and now because we're doing the wet mount, we're gonna take our mild soapy water solution and just squirt a little bit onto there and squirt a little bit onto our decal. So now both surfaces are a little bit wet. Now we're gonna come in here and we're just going to, you could actually put it down and you're like, oh, I don't want it down. You can pull it right back up. See that? I can push it down and pull it right back up. That's the nice thing about doing a wet mount is if you make a mistake, you can pull it back up. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with our vinyl squeegee and squeegee down, up. Or is it gonna be going from the middle up, middle down? And as you can see, it's not really sticking, okay? But that's, that's another reason, this is one of the reasons why I do not like the wet mount, because um, it doesn't stick right away. You're gonna have to have some drying time in order for it to stick. But the good thing about it is that it, you will not have any bubbles if you do it this way, if you're a beginner installer. So we're just gonna go ahead and squeegee it all the way down. Okay, all right, so now this side is squeegeed down. We could possibly pull it back up if we had to. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tape. But we're gonna go ahead. Again, this is for inexperienced installers who um, are afraid to do the dry mount. That's basically what the wet mount's for. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and pull off our mask. We're gonna take our soapy solution, spray it down a little bit. It's not, unfortunately, it's not helping today that the cotton trees are blowing, cotton everywhere, but here we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead, again, middle out, middle out. All right, now we've got it down. You wanna really make sure it's squeegeed down well, because when you go to peel the transfer mask off, you could peel the vinyl back up. One little trick that will help release the transfer mask from the vinyl is to get it wet. So we're gonna very liberally spray this water on here. We wanna get it really wet so it releases. I'm gonna go ahead and squeegee one more time. Really wanna make sure that I got the vinyl down. All right, now this transfer tape should release fairly easily. Uh, see, and it's see how it's wanting to pull up the vinyl? You're just gonna have to take it easy. And we may have to let it sit on here for a minute. Again, this is, this is the reason why I don't like the wet mount method. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and let it sit here for a minute and adhere, and we'll come back to it in just a minute. Spray some more water on there again.
So now we have it off. Now we're going to want to make sure and go around and we're going to have to make sure everything's sticking. As you can see, some of the stuff is not sticking quite as well because we still have water in there and that water needs to evaporate. As always guys, link in the description below for all the tools that I'm using in this video. The next thing that we can do to kind of help this along is to use a heat gun. And I'm going to be taking this heat gun and I'm going to slowly heat the vinyl and push it down at the same time. Some of these slides, as you know, are textured. This particular side is textured. And that's not a huge problem, but we definitely need to make sure we get good adhesion. Not only do we have the water uh, that we need to evaporate, but we kind of want the vinyl to kind of take shape of some of this textured stuff. That's how we know it's making a good adhesion. So I'm going to take the heat gun and just continue working. Okay, we can start to feel. You don't want to get it too hot because you can burn the vinyl. Again, this is just one method of doing it. I, I personally don't recommend the wet mount because I think that it just takes too long to get the sticker to adhere. Um, you could also use a little bit less water. Um, that's also a possibility. I prefer the dry mount and this is kind of why because we're going to have to make sure that every single letter is really adhered, it's gonna to have to sit in the sun, make sure that water gets evaporated before we move the slide in. If we move the slide in, there's a possibility that the weather stripping could peel it right off. Okay, let's talk a little bit about vinyl graphics in general. Okay, vinyl is not a permanent solution. The vinyl graphics are made to be removed, so they will not last forever. A lot of these vinyls are only good four to seven years outdoors. But there are a number of things that contribute to the longevity of the decal. How much the decal is exposed to extreme weather conditions, extreme colds, extreme heat, how often this gets touched. And as a slide decal, obviously, the vinyl is going to get touched every time you slide the slide in. The weather stripping is going to touch up against it. That is possible that it could, if this is not adhered good enough, cause this to peel. The areas to really watch are going to be the sharp points and any small letters. Now we have a lot of big letters here, so I don't suspect that we'll have any issues with this portion. The only portion we could have is right there with the sharp points of the flame. Now you could get clear vinyl and just cover the whole decal if you wanted to, but they also sell uh, what's called crystal clear seam tape. They use this for vinyl wraps. Okay, so we can use that to kind of help our situation. And let me show you what I mean. Again, I'm not saying you're going to need to do something like this. I'm just showing you this as a possibility to help with longevity if you notice any type of peeling. And we could do much more than what I'm about to do. I'm just going to show you this as an example. So we can take this seam tape and we can overlap it onto the vinyl, half on the vinyl, half on our slide. And you can just work it around any area that you think might have an issue or that you wanna make sure doesn't have an issue. Like I said, it may not be a big deal in your case or it may end up being a big deal. Be sure to check out the description below you guys because I'll have all the parts I used in this video listed in the description below along with links to our store uh, so you can check out uh, the RV slide decals that we have to offer. Like I said, if you don't see what you're looking for, be sure to message me because I might be able to custom make it for you. If you're wanting a, a design that we have, you just want it in a different size, be sure to message me because I probably can do that for you. We're always looking for new designs, so if you have any ideas that you want to share, you can hit us up on Instagram, DM us there, or you can message me uh, through Etsy or our email address. 
But again, hopefully that covered everything that you needed to see. If there was something that I did not get to or I did not answer one of your questions in the video, please make a comment below and I will try to answer all of those that I can. And again, thank you to all of you out there who have purchased one of our decals. We really appreciate it. Smash that like button if this video helped you out. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we upload new videos. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace!